Okay, so how are you doing? I've not seen you for a while. I know, tell me about it. It's been a while. We've had a good little chat, a good little catch up this evening, a little yeah. bit of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> right. So, are you going to tell us what you've been up to recently? Um, do you know, it's been like a mixed bag, to be honest. Big time mixed bag. Um, obviously, I run a production company now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's taking up pretty much most of my life. But aside that, you know, I do a lot of teaching as well. I've been in Newcastle all this week teaching kids. The first experience in drama, which has been pretty rewarding, pretty mm-hmm. cool. Uh, call it playing a day, which yeah. is pretty challenging, but that's been quite quite good. Um, what else, really? Um, you know, just trying to balance life, I suppose, and failing miserably. I was going to say, what, what kind of luck are you having with that? So tell us more about your working with kids and drama and kind of that side of things. Yeah, I am. Um, so <clears throat> I've been teaching probably about seven years now. Um, I'll be honest, it's something that I think as a kid I wouldn't have minded doing. Like, you know, like as a drama student at drama school, yeah. it was that kind of thing uh, I had a drama school, it'd be the shit. Do you know what I mean? Like proper, <laughs> proper had all these ideas, but then that kind of died down. Um, but then once the acting kind of took a little bit of a back seat, it was that whole thing of started teaching more for money than anything, but then I started finding it really rewarding and started realising that I was I were pretty decent at it. Um, yeah. I was kind of shadowing uh, a woman who was very successful, but very scary. Uh, <laughs> and was I, that? I, uh, well, I don't want to name her on it. But, you know, she took me under her wing. Uh, she taught me as a kid and then, you know, I worked for her. And she had a, she has a very different method to what I have, but I, I, I learned a lot off of her, of how to control kids. Yeah, uh, how I think to, she's retired now. No, right? she's not, unfortunately. Oh, okay, I'm thinking no. of someone else. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I kind of, I shadowed her for a few years and I, and I learned a lot off her. Uh, mm. But, you know, I kind of... In uh, what regard? What kind of thing? So that whole thing of, um, the woman was strictly a dancer. Yeah. Uh, and so everything was all about, you know, coordination, timing, very military-like. Oh, right. um, but she got the best out of kids, you know, kids that sometimes might have been a little bit... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. You know, kind of like they wanted to be there, but they maybe didn't believe in themselves. Yeah. Um, and she knew how to pull that out of them, sometimes by scaring them after death. <laughs> but by yeah. the time it got to the end of it, She'd done a it job. A That's it. It did yeah. have a purpose, and she was able to kind of put on this mask. I think. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It was that whole thing of don't smile until Christmas kind of idea. Yeah. You know that they say for teachers. Yeah, uh, like a she... Harry Potter film where you think the bad yeah. guy, yeah. the teacher's a What's bad it called? guy. called Snape or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then turns out actually. He's got a backstory. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And he's all right. Yeah, she was she like Snape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll call her Snape anyway. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so then kind of like, I kind of left her after a bit, um, mentally damaged. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I left her um, after we did a project together that was very successful, and I thought, I'm going to keep doing this. Um, and that I, was seven years that ago. That was seven years ago, and I suppose, fast forward to today, I'm a um, drama teacher in multiple drama schools for kids um yeah. work freelance a lot done a lot of projects for community for councils um and i also work for a company called conflux which is a theater and education yeah. company uh which I, I, i've never been that interested in theater and education that kind of thing of people coming in and doing a performance and then going so what did that mean to you yeah um but uh, the reason i kind of really stuck with conflux they kind of put it in the kids hands um yeah, which is great red. yeah it's your idea of look it's a play in a day it's your play yeah. you're going to perform it and I'm just going to try facilitate yeah. it and let you guys have a good time for the day and uh, yeah. it's it's still real even though it's absolutely exhausting doing it five days on bounce all over the country driving here there and everywhere it is very very rewarding and it's amazing I think the standard that kids can oh yeah. yeah yeah well you know like you're talking about this um, conflicts for example I'll walk into a school in the morning and I'll say, look, guys, uh, they don't even know they're doing a play that day. Most of the teachers don't even tell them. Yeah. Look, guys, you're with me for the day and at 2.30 today, you're going to put on a 10-minute play. You're going to know it off by heart and you're never going to see a script. And they all go, what? 
and they've never not once done it yet. And I think I've done it probably about seven hundred and odd times. It's yeah. pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty rewarding, and it's it's, it's almost like you don't need us. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, it is. And you know what? As well, before we move on, I just need to make this like a point, and I, it's a little bit of a cliche, I think, around conflux and the work that they do. But Matt schools you walk into and people will go. You're gonna struggle with a few. You know, he's he's a little he's troublemaker. Got behavior yeah, issues. behavior issues, or you know, like uh, some of them just won't take part or keep an eye out for her. Yeah, and then sure as it is, maybe sometimes me because I just want to be to them, but I just straight go to them and go right. You are one of my main parts, <laughs> and by the end of the day, everyone's just like, I just can't believe that they've done that, and it's just like because yeah. you never let them do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you told them they couldn't. Yeah. Not just in your words, your body language, your tonality. <laughs> yeah. And mm, uh, and then interesting. You know, end it there. I see a teacher walk back in and watch performance all at school, stood there, I'm stood up back at all. And then, you know, the kid or the kids that he told me to kind of watch out for stand up in the middle of and the stage it. and absolutely knock it out of the park and and that's that's a buzz in itself because it's yeah. not only kinda of like um Seeing them do great for themselves, it's just great to kind of just shut up people who seem to know what they're on about, exactly. <laughs> which they do in certain aspects. But you know, it's uh, yeah. it's nice to see a kid who's um, they... seen as an, an under, not even an underdog, seen as an underachiever, mm. uh, seen as a problem or a troublemaker mm. uh, due to normal methods of teaching, and mm. then you come in fresh face. I don't know you. We're going to try it this way and they succeed. And yeah. it's just that whole thing. Of, no preconceived yeah, judgment. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Perfect. Gives them a free reign, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's your teaching. What what kind of, have you been doing any jobs? Well, I know full well you've been doing yeah, any jobs. Yeah, we, we, we are brothers. Um, jobs what? Uh, acting jobs. Yeah. 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 Um, it's been, it, it was, I always say it's been quiet and, and it has in terms of, you know, people do work all the time. Um, I've been quite selective. You know, like I've got an understanding with my agent. It's that kind of thing a lot. I'm quite happy with two or three jobs a year. It's great for me, especially if the two or three that I really like. And they pay well. And they pay well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's that um, it's that thing of I've just been quite selective and they don't send me, f send, you know, me everything that comes through the door. Yeah. Um yeah, and that's kind I guess of nice. That's the art of having a good relationship with your agent. Yeah, because absolutely. You're not wasting their time then. You're not wasting, wasting mine. Yours. Yeah, and I've had bad relationships with agents and in the past. Everybody else. Yeah. In between. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, it's 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 been quiet-ish. I say it's been quiet. You know, I've done some of the biggest <laughs> jobs in my life this year. But um, yeah. yeah, I've just finished. Well, I said just finished. I filmed it over twelve months ago now. But uh, episode of Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of extra special. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Which is really cool, but it's kind of extra special that it's the first woman doctor, the yeah. 13th doctor, which is Jodie Whittaker, who's an amazing human being. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's sure her first... <laughs> well, maybe not, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's her first episode as the doctor, and I get to go on a little bit of an adventure with her. Nice. Which is my kind of perfect thing, just in and out. You know, I got to work with the whole team down at Cardiff. They were brilliant. Yeah. Meet the whole cast. Worked there for three weeks, got to do, you know, you know, on stunts and yeah, and all sorts yeah. of stuff, uh, which you still can't talk about yet, but yeah. you know, got to do um got to do a lot of crazy stuff which were great. Um with a great team of people. And it'll be good for the kids, I guess, you work with when they tune in and see that absolutely yeah a lot of them will well I've 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 been recently I've not been able to tell anybody anything for obviously like twelve months and yeah. then I kind of, um, you know, the air date's out now and, and all of this. Yeah. So I'm allowed to tell people that, you know, I'm in it. At least I can't tell them all else. But, I mean, I teach, crazily enough, I teach 800 individual kids a week, me. <laughs> Which is Say mad. Again. I teach 800 unique kids a week. Wow. So 400 of them are kids that I'll never see again or I might see next year. But 400 of them yeah. are my weekly students. Right, okay, uh, yeah. that I teach over 11, 12 different classes yeah. um, in acting for screen and drama. And so to be able to tell them, yeah. uh, 
you know, the younger lot. I've never been a Doctor Who man myself. I know how big it is. I know it's the BBC's biggest. Yeah, it sounds biggest... quite disrespectful, doesn't it? Yeah, but it does. Like, as a kid growing up, of course I know the Daleks yeah. and I know who. Mm. But, yeah, it wasn't on in our house when we grew up. No. And that's the bottom line, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's why we that went into it. That is the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. But I think this it's, it's exciting. It looks cool. Jodie Whittaker, yeah. And they've kind of said, um, oh, well, you know, it'd have been great to be in any series of Doctor Who, but the fact that it's kind of took this turn, which I think is amazing, and yeah. she is brilliant. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's kind of like, it's just an extra honour that it's that first episode and the, the, the kind of the predictions have come out that it's going to be the most viewed episode of Doctor Who of all time. Yeah, I can believe that, definitely. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're going to get your keyboard warriors not liking it. You're going to get people, this, that, and the yeah, other. You, can't you know, it's going to call controversy. It's big for yeah. sometimes the right reasons. It's big for the wrong reasons. But the point is, it's amazing to be a part of it. And, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a pretty yeah. cool job. So that, that's, uh, that's a, I'd probably say that's my most recent job that you can catch uh, catch on TV recently. Um, did a little Amazon Prime thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say about that, but it's just a short, small... I'm um, not sure you've even told No, I don't think I've told you. It was just a... No. Uh, just they just rung me up, asked, asked me if I wanted to do um, just a small scene with um, David Thewlis, Harry Potter again. Mm. Harry Potter. <laughs> um, uh, there's a theme here, isn't there? There uh, is. Yeah. Um, who played, again, don't really watch him, the wolf. Turns into a wolf. All right. Come on, you know him. I don't, Professor yeah. Summer. My anyway, God. you'll know yeah, the actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's not embarrass ourselves. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's it. We are embarrassed. Well, you not embarrass me in my like yeah. a Harry Potter. And I was about knowledge. to say somebody else um, who was in the scene as well, but I'm going to be very rude now and not say it because I cannot remember her name, even though she's a very, very famous actress. And she was a <laughs> lovely woman, but uh, yeah. the name is not it's all about to networking. Me right now. Yeah, it's yeah. about networking, and she was brilliant. But um, yeah, so uh, acting wise, that's about it this year. Uh, right, if I'm honest. Yeah, so I guess Doctor Who's, like you say, you're picking up two or three good jobs a year. You're mm. happy with that. Um, there's always this thing that when people don't see someone on the screen all the time, what are they doing now? They're not doing anything. Blah, They're dead. Blah, blah. Yeah, the career's yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pretty much. Know, what is a career anyway? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've done Corey, mm-hmm. massive, obviously. Big. Is it the biggest soap? Uh, I think it's the longest running. 50 mm. years it's coming on, in it? Maybe. Maybe it's past that now. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I have of, um, you know, like when you're always having these interviews, all these conversations. or How long were you in? Four years, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, like, three and a half, I think. Three, three and, and a half, half right, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, when you're having these conversations, it's always... So it's kind of like you don't want to sound like blowing. Can I swear? You, um, you don't want me to, so I won't. Um, I'm just kind of thinking yeah. that some of the kids let's keep we it work open. with, yeah, let's keep it universal. I mean, these kids no, absolutely. generally, yeah. hear this I just have a really thing. bad, yeah, bad mouth, but I'll keep it down. Yeah. But when you're usually I doing these things, you sound like you're, you know, blowing your own trumpet. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'm very, I'm very fortunate and. Um, very humble is the word, I think. Uh, that you I, describe yourself as humble. Remember, where? I'm your brother. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, like you say, Jokes. I've been in Korea, which was, um, you know, the longest running, biggest soap on the planet. I uh, started out in Grange Hill. Yeah. Which is um, the longest. That, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that was uh, the longest running children's show, I think, of all time. Hit 30 series. Wow. Uh, I spent five years in that. And who was the guy who brought that back who you were with? Cause there His name was, was Phil Richmond. That was it. Yeah. yeah. And he brought it back. Yeah. On Lime it? TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, when he so he created it and then when he brought it back up to Liverpool, uh, kind of like refreshed the series, uh, brought me in. And I did five years on that as well as a kid, which... Again, and it was a good role as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great with Bully. Like... Yeah. yeah, it was a bully. You know, I wouldn't dare watch it back now because I don't. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I've seen pictures. Like, that's like, what yeah. I mean. I think, what's going on there? But yeah. um, I don't think I'd watch it back. And believe me, uh, you know, this is just me being completely honest. I would have never cast me then as that role. But somehow I managed I to worm looked, my way into it. Yeah. I did look horrible. I still do a bit. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, it was that whole thing. I think they just thought, oh, he looks dirty. We'll give it yeah. to him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, again, just an amazing experience. Like that was my first. That was the first time of me being on a set, um, and to do that at a young age. I always say, I tell you what, I always say to my students, especially not not to kids. I don't say it, but when I'm doing adult classes or master classes or whatever, I always say to the adults, I'm just like. I have massive respect for all you guys in this room. And this isn't me just like some intro that I'll always say. It's that whole thing that I have massive respect that you're not the ones that are sat on your bums not doing all mm. or saying, I could have done that or I could have done this. Mm. You push yourself out there and, yeah. you know, as our confidence slowly deteriorates the older we get and anxiety is built, yeah. you have managed yeah. to find your way If you're into not published this room. or you're not out there and you've not been a household name no. by a certain age, you're expected it's to stop that you're, yeah. being artistic. Yeah, exactly. To a degree. That's, that yeah. Is, yeah, to a degree, that, yeah. I'm generalising, yeah. but that is quite a... There is... That's the mentality that goes yeah. in, in all of us. And so to, to kind of like be sat in a studio in Manchester or Leeds or Liverpool and looking at, you know, a variety of 18-year-olds who can't really find classes because there's not that many out there. Mm. Um, or, you know, because they've left, you know, their kids' drama school and they yeah. still want to continue it. And if yeah. you haven't made it by then, it's hard enough to find an adult class. Like, you know, the ones that I teach in Leeds or Liverpool, people are coming from five cities over. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're traveling yeah. nearly near on 80 mile to get to a class every week because that's how much they want to do it. Yeah. And yeah. it's that whole thing, uh, you know, going back to what I was saying, I just always say I've got a massive respect because I've got to be honest, if Granger like a drop for me as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a kid back then, you don't think that much right now. I, I'm a thinker and it's that whole thing mm -hmm. and it's, it's destructive. Well, you don't have that elevated perspective as a kid to yeah. kind of reflect yeah you, you just need, do it yeah and, and you know the there's been more. there's been years where even in the, you know with my history of jobs and all that there's been years where it's been quiet and i've thought i can't do this anymore and i'm gonna hang yeah. up my boots here and then you know it comes back around and it goes but then there's other people and again like they've just got such strong will that it's that whole thing of, it doesn't matter if i'm 48 and i haven't done all yeah. i want to do it and some people are just there doing it because. Yeah, it's but what fun. is doing something? No, this, this is, is what this I'm is saying. No, thing, this is isn't what, it? Yeah, like, yeah. Where, Where's the benchmark of, of, of a piece being something yeah. like? Well, that's it. Yeah, they're there, and 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 for some that's enough, and others they yeah. want more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's no right or wrong about it, but I think it's just that whole thing of the confidence that how many times you've been sat in a pub and a guy's told you, you know, leaned over and gone, I could have done that. Yeah. And, you know, but yeah. didn't do note about it. And, and there's, yeah. I think there's 10 people to every one person that ends up just, just going through that door and going, yeah. I'm going to give it a go. And yeah. that's why I always think to myself, you know, like, good for you because I don't think I could have done that. Yeah. Like, and that's just me, you know, with my own self-doubt. Yeah. And you've had, you know... Call it luck, call it whatever you want. You've you've been lucky enough to yeah, to to have, you know, jobs that have been popularly recognised and paid work, mm. which attracts an agent. And you've still wanted to say, nah, yeah, not anymore, yeah, um, and still have confidence knocks and all of that, yeah, and, you know, and yeah. still think, you know, like, well, am yeah. I good enough for this? And am I this, that, and the other? And I suppose that's that's as all the way it in creative thing. Like I always say, create 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 creativity as this kind of it has this wave that you go through, doesn't it? Where when you first start something new, you think it's ace, <laughs> yeah, and then it can be an hour, it can be a day, it can be a week, but it's a point where you go, what is this utter dross? <laughs> yeah. And then you've got to get yeah. through that hard motion for it to then find yeah. its way back to that that pure f feeling of this is awesome. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I guess this is why I've started this podcast for people, creative people, to talk about the creative process mm. because I think the creative process, whether you're published or not, is an import important process to explore at some point, if not throughout your life. Yeah, absolutely. It helps processing, understanding. It's a release. Yeah, creates it's, curiosity, me, it's a release. Yeah. which 
creates more knowledge into mm. other fields, which makes you a broader person. It's a powerful blah, tool. Blah, that's blah. it. It's, it's, yeah. it's a tool that you know some of some of us are teached out of harness, other ones are, are teach to kind of put it to one side or. But you know, there's no doubt in it. It's powerful, and it can, you know, it can so make or destroy. It can make or break. That's all yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say. It can um, create and that creativity. sounds extreme. Yeah, but... it does. But it can like and and you know like and I'm not just on about oh for one person it'll make for one person it'll break. No, mm. uh, one minute it will make you, and then the next minute it will break you. The yeah. same person, the same, the yeah. same project, the same thing. Yeah. It's that whole thing of. You know, when you get creative and you're working on your own work, whatever it might be, I don't know, it's a book, you've picked up a guitar and you've got a new riff, you're writing a script, uh, whatever it might be, you're, you're editing a piece. You put so much of yourself into it yeah. that that, all of a sudden, it's it's like jumping out of trenches. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of, you sit there for so long and then you start to think, I've put so much of myself into this that if people say that it's crap, is that is that gonna is that is that gonna take a piece yeah. of me away? And you know, we live in a world now where there's at least one person that thinks it's gonna be crap. There's yeah. probably or a lot someone more. goes, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, which is fine because you know, like <laughs> you wasn't meant to. <laughs> but no, but it's that whole thing. Of, yeah, like yeah. Sometimes you know you've got this on a good day it's fine. On a, on good a bad day it's, day it's yeah. It's not. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's not. Is no. it? Yeah. Absolutely not. But yeah. But yeah, you still think... keep returning to the sketch part or the yeah, but and, you yeah. know I don't I I don't for one minute understand, not understand sorry why some people put that scrapbook away, why so you know and 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 I don't know anybody that stops it altogether but I understand yeah that... can you can you does does it kind of just change its face a little bit it yeah. kind of a bit like a shape shifter isn't it where. All of a sudden, there's some guy who's, you know, a teenager into his early 20s, you know, like rock and rolling, writing songs, sharing all his art, paintings, things like that. And then just as he kind of reaches his mid-30s, he's maybe just into just more subtle photography or... Yeah, yeah, know. it definitely changes That's... forms. I think, I think, I don't think we ever lose as creativity. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. I've, I've got, I've got some friends where I was just like, I'm not creative. I'm not. Do you know what I mean? And, and I don't, don't believe it. Yeah. Don't, again, it, it takes shape in different forms. Mm. Some that we can't see. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But you know, it's that whole thing. Uh, I think often we think when we think about creativity, everybody straight goes to art, don't they? In any form, they go to music, writing visual yeah your paintings. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people when it comes to creativity like I say when you hear people say I'm not creative mm. usually people associate with that but then it's like well yeah but then you might be able to go into a meeting and at work and be yeah. able to turn a client around like that by just with getting your completely articulation. yeah with your articulation yeah. Yeah. and it's that whole thing of, but then you'll go home and tell yourself that you're not creative yeah, and it's that whole thing. I know you, you was creative within that situation, but you're just thinking about I don't, yeah. I don't paint or I don't write. Yeah, or you go around to their house and you know the interior design and the, and it's all they've taken such a lead role on that, mm -hmm. and they've never even really considered that either. Yeah. It's all just yeah, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you worked on something with, let me think now, the, uh, get the name right, Tiger Aspect. Yes. Who did one of my favourite shows, Beaky Blinders. You worked on some a com BBC comedy called... Boy Meets Girl. That's it, yeah. Boy Meets Girl, yeah. And that was a couple of years ago. A couple of years, uh, I think we finished, I think the beginning of last year was it aired right all right yeah uh the second series did um yeah to, going back to when i was saying earlier that I'm, i feel that i'm really fortunate and really lucky that you know i've been in it's longest running soap it's huge kids tv show doctor who now yeah. but boy meets girl were kind of groundbreaking in its own way as well which yeah. was another very special reason to be involved yeah. in it um so it, it, it was basically a story about a, a transgender woman um 
and it was trying it was trying to be every time somebody is put into a piece of writing in television as transgender it's always about the change or, yeah, you yeah. know that there's something wrong with me or you know this yeah. that, and the other someone but, who is not quite comfortable with yeah, it's, yeah yeah or, or you know about that transition yeah, or yeah. um you know before it and the confusion and the mm-hmm. depression and whereas boy meets girl were like no this is this is a part of how the world is now mm. and we're just going to tell a normal story <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah. it happens to be around somebody who is transgender yeah um and then they went the extra mile and they cast some an actor who actually was transgender yeah um and i mean just what a short work on um yeah it were i've always wanted to do comedy that's that's like kind of like where i find my my most comfort you know which is i, I think mm-hmm. kind of like a little bit of a struggle because that's i don't often go for comedies now um when I've got meetings and auditions, which I kind of miss because that's that's where I think I feel most centered. That's where I find my confidence. Yeah. That's where I feel that I'm I'm at my strongest. And all the way through my career, yes, I've brought funny elements in, you know, Corrie and this, that and the other. But and I maybe maybe trace this back to you watching a lot of Jim Carrey, absolutely, the Mask, yeah, Ace Ventura, things all like of that. that. Yeah, as a and kid, you yeah. were like what seven? eight all the faces all the you know it animated. had an unbelievable effect on me yeah it would yeah. just yeah um just I, you know i always say this, it sounds so corny but i always say this but there's nothing better than making somebody laugh yeah there isn't True. it's kind of like it's just what i do as in yeah. like and i don't know it's what i do <laughs> i mean as in like it, it's yeah. what it's that whole thing of if i'm around people and obviously you know we're having a serious conversation now but nine times out of ten i'll always try just make a situation funny even if it's not <laughs> yeah uh, and you know sometimes that's a little bit of me kind of getting out of some awkward tension yeah, yeah. but the majority of the time it's that whole thing uh, they just kind of like love making people laugh i think it's great and you know i'm not i'm not a laugher really uh you know i'll have the odd chuckle but i'm not a real you know cackler uh, yeah but when i when somebody does get me what that's a feeling it. yeah what a feeling and so if i make somebody else do that um and so going back to the comedy, been been a part of that. It were um it was just a dream come true. Um you know, again, no disrespect to it, because there is no disrespect. I absolutely love my time on Corey, I love my time on Granger, I loved all those jobs I did. But I never grew up wanting to be in them shows. Yeah. Uh so, you know, when I were in them, I were like, what an honour and I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do my best in this, but no, I wanted to be in a comedy, and I knew that from yeah. a very, very young age. That's yeah. what I want to do, and this was the first. I'd been in a comedy before, but, it, well, is it a comedy if it's not funny? <laughs> um, <laughs> hmm, yeah. is it? Yeah. Um, but Want to ponder. Yeah, want to ponder. Uh, yeah, so getting that job, it was just like, what? And it came about at a funny time, because it's when the industry kind of tried to grab me back in. I hadn't worked in two years. My previous agent had dropped me. Yeah. Um, One I was, of the lulls that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. I was... I remember. Uh, I was struggling, and, um, yeah, my agent just said, it's not working out. I'm like, okay. Uh, she left, and I was just like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I did not go out and look for anybody. Mm-hmm. I did not do anything, and then I... And I think Dad brought brought you a, a Royal Mail job application for Yeah, he did. Yeah. Let's let's start thinking let's, of other things. That's it, Cheers, yeah. Dad. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, D. Um, and then and just it sounds like a crazy story that you won't you won't believe it if it were written. But I must have left my spotlight up. Spotlight for people that don't know is a, an, an online um, form of media where basically everybody works through for the acting. Everybody works through it. It's imagine Facebook, but you have a okay, professional profile. Yeah, to host Cast, your show. Reels, yeah, casting, profile. Yeah, yeah. Casting director puts jobs out. Your agent sends your profile. Yeah, they look at it. If they like you, you'll get the me. And everybody works on spotlight. Yeah. So anyway, when my agent dropped me, she must have deleted herself off of uh, my spotlight, like like yeah. a bat out of hell. Um, <laughs> and I didn't realize my spotlight was still up because you know it were probably three months had gone by and. 
I was still probably quite sad about it, but I'd forgotten about it. And then I got yeah. a phone call on my mobile phone from a number I didn't know. Yeah. I don't do this. And obviously... The, uh, Royal agent, Mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Royal Mail. Um, no offence to anybody no, who well, works at Royal I Mail. I've got two best mates with postmen. So, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, the um, I got a phone call and I answered it. And my agent on my spotlight page must have deleted her number and put mine on. And so uh, okay. I got a phone call and it was a casting director that I had worked with years and years before on that comedy that I said wasn't really a comedy because it wasn't funny. Yeah. Um, and she just said, Johnny, uh, there's a, there's a, we just want you to read for something. It's not even a show. It's not been commissioned. It's just a pilot about a transgender love story. Yeah. Um, we just won't mind you coming in and just, just auditioning for it. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Didn't actually go for the role that I ended up getting. Uh, but anyway, I read for it. Felt that the meeting went great, and I haven't been in a room for months. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, mean I went in with that kind of thing. What have I got to lose? So I went down. To yeah, tag. I guess it can be a good thing at times. Sometimes it depends. I depends where you're at, doesn't it? Yeah, it's all, it's all internal. Yeah, sometimes it's I have nothing to lose, but I'm absolutely petrified because if I don't get this, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. have nothing to lose. Times ten. Yeah, that's it exactly. <laughs> um, but then. The other times, something seems to leave you and you're just more on your game, I guess. Yeah. I suppose you lose that weight, don't you, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. No, really, I walked into that room um, and I kind of read it out and it went really, really well. They were all laughing away. Um, and kind of like when I walked in, I could see that they weren't seeing many people. So I thought, well, that's really strange because I was actually sat at the side of Denise Welsh who ended up being in the, being in the job as well. Only about three people in the waiting room, and I thought, why would they ring me? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that isn't a oh, why would they ring me? Or did, it was that whole thing. I don't have an agent. <laughs> yeah, I haven't worked in over yeah. a year. Yeah, nobody's wanted to see me, and yet why am I still here with the select few people? Yeah, uh, and it went absolutely great. And then I, I left the building, and I was walking Elvis. away. I know, yeah, <laughs> and I was buzzing. Um, and before I got to the end of the street where Tiger Aspect uh, offices are, my phone started ringing. And I answered it and they went, Johnny, they absolutely love you. Will you just come back? And I was like, what? And they were like, have you got on the tube yet? I was like, no. They were like, will you come back? So I said, yeah. So I went back in and they just said, look, do you mind reading for the comedy sidekick of it? Um, which is the part I preferred, the brother. So I was like, yeah, sure. And then they went, we'll give you five minutes outside to look at it. So I had a look at it, went back in anyway. It went great. And then they rung up and said, you've got the job now. That felt great for me because it was that kind of little confidence boost. But the thing is, this wasn't a show yet. Yeah. It wasn't. It was a concept that they were trying to get off the ground. And because money's tight as old these days with anything, yeah. it was like, we're not going to fork out for a pilot. Um, but sometimes that's all you need. You yeah. just need that confidence from some people to go, look, we're confident in you yeah absolutely and, yeah 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 and they're confident in what they're about to deliver mm. whether somebody's come and put the money up front yet or not it starts to just generate yeah the kind of how i guess how you've come home in teams be from working with teams before and it, it's a real family unit yeah. and you're working close with people aren't you so yeah. it kind of it's like a little kind mm. of warm hug back yeah. into the world of of doing yeah, doing what performing, you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and then and then from there, we we did a rehearsed read in the column, where you basically get with a director, producer, the writer, and then the cast. Yeah. And you just have a day to just figure stuff out, and then you basically sit on a table, much like a panel, you know, comic con or convention. Yeah. And a lot of money comes in, producers, you know, all mm. that, and they come sit down in a little basement somewhere in Soho. And um, we read it. Now, the thing is, I, I'm only just remembering this as I'm saying it. The funny thing is, right, clearly the BBC had an agenda where uh, they wanted to get transgender. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. They had an agenda where they wanted to do a transgender show. Yeah. And so they must have done a competition that boiled it down to two scripts. Now, in the room next door to us in this basement in Soho was the other show. And uh, what was going to happen is the audience was going to go from our room then into the next one. 
Right, okay. And yeah. it was a bit of a battle of the bands kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah. yeah. Um, and they were completely different shows, very funny yeah. in their own rights. Um, the other show was really funny, but it's very, very different. I didn't know what to expect it was like. Yeah. You know, the... Basically, the only thing that they had tied was the idea of transgender. Like, you know, like the style, uh, you know, the pace, the writing, everything was completely different. And so we went in, we watched the other laughing out loud, giving them big cheers, you know. Yeah. Um, Just going to that there, the kind of the battle of the bands thing. And like, I mean, we both work with kids and trying to get them to, you know, be more creative mm. and kind of put themselves forward. And, you know, we live in this kind of time where, you know, there's X Factor, Britain's Got Talent. It's all very, com- almost competitive. It's very competitive. Yeah, not yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I'm being polite about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, They're making a competition out of it. Mm. And we've spoken about how, how that can affect somebody who's even had early success as a, as a young kid in a big job like Grange Hill and then move straight on to Corrie. But then we've talked about how when things aren't, aren't going mm. well, how that can how that can affect you. But right from the off with these shirts, you're either better than someone or worse. Or, or, or <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You know, like and, and we're even get, doing it in schools yeah. now yeah. where it's there's X Factor competitions and kids get up and f- perform well. Yeah. I'm happy to just see kids get up and perform. Yeah, yeah. You know, there doesn't need... Maybe I'm just getting soft in my old age, but why make a competition out of the Mm. arts? Yeah. You know, like... I think... I think where I stand, there's a fine line between it, and I I completely get where you're coming from, as in, like, that whole thing. You know, do do we have to... uh, You know, does there have to be a competition? However, unfortunately, the world's like that. And I think... And it can strive us on. From a young age... Yeah is a good thing and not 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 in you know that tough thing uh mm. next <laughs> uh you know when a kid yeah. you know dares to stand up in front of the school and play accordion or whatever yeah um but it's that whole thing uh it's that fine balance of inc- uh, and you know like how, how do you balance that you're trying to encourage a kid look step up in front of the rest of the school yeah which you know for a lot of kids it's intimidating to walk yeah, the school yeah. halls yeah. <laughs> let alone stand on that stage yeah. and like we were saying earlier, put a piece of yourself out there for them to judge. Yeah. Now that is hard. Yeah. But then, and some kids at a young age are tuned into that. That that's what's happening, mm. and they have a high self awareness, and they can sense that that's what's happening, mm. and that they're the kids that struggle. Yeah. But they still have that creativity that they can do to a lesser audience in a different environment yeah. and setup, and they're fantastic. Or sometimes that's why we get them on film, because it's just more natural than a yeah. live audience, yeah. and they come out of the shell. Yeah. So there needs to be this inclusive... It's like, yeah, how do you condition it all? Because yeah. I've, everybody know... needs that voice, Yeah. and it can't just be it can't always come on out a and... stage yeah. singing yeah. and dancing. If... if if that kid wants to express themselves artistically through a film or something mm. like that, because that's or a vid, coding a video game, yeah. that's where it's at. Yeah. Because, you know, we're not trying to create children to be more withdrawn, like yeah. find the avenue that they will, sp- and the language that mm-hmm. they'll speak in and run with that. Yeah. But anyway, I'm talking too much. No, stuff. no, but no, but that's absolutely true. It, it's that whole thing of we put up so many obstacles uh, to kind of almost push so many to the side Mm. you know um and there's more options out there like let's you know we've got to say that there is of course there is of course there is but it's that whole thing uh, you know i'll put put it in a different term to the stage thing um i used to know an actor a great actor uh really really good could not handle auditions Mm -hmm. just wasn't that good in the room yeah his nerves part of him and things like that and it worked quite a lot yeah. Um and you know did a great job, but you know used to always say he did a great job. What once he was on set? Yeah, 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 yeah. And audition. you know and got a rapport with people that he'd worked with before, so they kept working with yeah. him. But then he hit a stage where he had to go out and meet new people, and he used to just always say like, I just fall apart in the audition room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, you know, that, that's again just another layman's term of that whole idea of 
there's people out there that are great at what they do, but there are not stages in which, you know, we let them, you know, harness how good they are in terms mm. of, you know, there is the stage. I shouldn't use the word stages. As in, you know, oh, well, we're going to put up a stage and we're going to do a talent show. Yeah. And if you have the bottle to stand up on there in front of 400 kids and do it, yeah. then you can play in our game. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, exactly. if you can't, then yeah. you aren't playing. Yeah. And then, you know, which is, you know, and, and everybody wants to be in this yeah. game. Yeah. All well, right, I, well, I, I can't be yeah. in that game. So, yeah. but I, what I could do is I could go in that other room with, um, you know, my mentor or my dad or whatever else, and I could record something and then I could play it and you could listen to it. Yeah. And, you know, maybe that might be better than anything yeah. that you see on stage. Maybe we could put that on a big big screen at the back of the stage and people can watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, great, kid, let's do it. I've sat in meetings with people like, no, we, we like people to, you know, we like them on the stage. Let's not change it. That's not inclusive, look. Yeah, no, not at all. That's it. It's not inclusive. Yeah. So, you know, like, let's move on yeah. and let's open the door for everybody to be creative and share it with people. And they can play a little competition if they want. Yeah. But they they have the involved. chance to yeah. play it mm. from their perspective as well. That's it. Absolutely. But yeah. Only one in it. Yeah. It's not like we, you know, I know we. It's not like we necessarily have the answers, but you know, it's it's been no, aware no. of. It's you know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, but you know, you've got to be allowed to be creative when you're a kid. Yeah, of course you do. And it, and the only way to do that to make sure every kid has access to be creative mm. is to give them as many avenues and them avenues be celebrated as well. Because yeah. it's okay saying, "All right, kid, you can go make a film, or you can go code a, a computer game, or or." or, or make a music video or whatever it is you want to do. But that won't be entering our competition. Yeah. It's brilliant and you can you can celebrate that in your own little crowd, yeah. but that won't be part of the school production or the drama school product or yeah. you know it So then all of a sudden it devalues they're, they're, yeah, they're completely. Told that you're not your piece is not worth as much as others. Correct. Yeah. 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 And you know, yeah, the yeah. same thing comes, you know, the same barriers created with money in it at yeah. times, you know. Yeah, and I think old. there's there's a lot of people now some in education, fewer in education, but around education, speaking into education there and working hard to make education change with these kind of avenues, I yeah. guess. Like yeah. there's loads of companies out there now, isn't there? Yeah. And and schools taking it fully on board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is getting better. But, but yeah, when I was a kid, if you couldn't get up on stage, Sorry, yeah. sorry, lad. Like, uh, go find something else to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm trying to think what else we've got. I mean, we've been going for a while now. It's gone all right. First one. Yeah, it's all right. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good yeah, fun. I, think I good love idea. what you're doing here. I think it's great. <laughs> you're doing fantastic. Yeah. Well, the uh, little studio. Yeah. No, cheers, man. Very good. Next, um, yeah, thanks for doing this anyway. No problem. Well, uh, yeah. this was my first podcast. And mine. I feel like I've been a little bit... And, uh, I think it's gone all right. I think it's gone all right, but yeah. uh, usually I'm a lot more chilled out. I feel like my voice is already chilled out now. Yeah. Just saying chilled out. But um, I was quite tired when we started because we, we walk, had something we to eat and blah, blah, blah. But I blah. think um, I'd love to come back. Yeah. Well, um, the kind of thing I'm thinking is that I'm going to kind of be on a bit of a cycle with it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, maybe be cool. three well, like months, I said, six I don't, months. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'd, I'd love to You come can back come back the... and tell <sighs> everybody how much it hurt you that, you know, they didn't like your part in Doctor Who. Ooh, and... Well, you know, can I say this before I go? How are you feeling so, yeah. about, yeah. Uh, I'll just say this before I go. Um, so, I'm... I'm I'm big into my video games. I mean, I haven't had mm. much time to play them recently because it's been so busy. But uh, the way that I kind of switch off is listening to gaming podcasts. Okay, right, cool. Uh, that's the way that I, I, it's the only way I get to sleep. Um, my mind's always racing and I'm always working. But then if I put one of them on, and often they're talking about games that I don't even play because I haven't had time to buy them and play them. Yeah. But there's, there's just something in my nature that from a kid 
loving a video game so much it puts me at ease. Mm. And um, so one of the sites that I go on quite a lot is called IGN. I've been going for years. Biggest gaming website going. I love it. All right. All right. Well, I used to love it. Anyway, um, they put on their website the other day when to expect the Doctor Who review for episode one, season 11. Mm. And I thought, I'm going to be reviewed by my favourite website. <laughs> <laughs> and I am kind of terrified because it's the first show that I've done because IGN are a big game site, but they also do, you know, the the, the big kind of, uh, the big TV shows and the yeah. big movies. And uh, Has Doctor Who got a video game? Like a computer game? Is there, is there one? I'm sure there will be one. Yeah, I was going to say, like, they're definitely we'll not going to miss on that. There. I don't Angle. know, Nez or Snez or... SNES. <laughs> SNES. Are people still playing SNES? No, but you know what I'm saying, as in there yeah. will have been one in the past, but I don't think there's been one in a while. There might be an Android one or whatever. But, mm. but yeah, so that's that's a bit daunting. I'm going to say that much. But um, do you know what? They like it, they like it, they don't, they don't. <laughs> it's that whole thing. Uh, I mean, I, I, can, I can... No, I'm getting a... I, like I say, I'm not... Um, I work, work with a few people who are big into Doctor Who, um, and I'm just picking up a vibe from people that's all it is because i know you know i don't know much that's going on like we said earlier we didn't grow up within our house but i just think the the vibe that's building about this new one jody Whitaker, and it's just got a good energy yeah that's about what, it, that, hasn't that, it? you just took the words out of my mouth i was just about to say yeah. a good energy absolutely yeah a and i think energy. i think the people who try to be the keyboard warriors, they're not going to have much of a voice. I don't yeah, think. and it's the same. It's the same with everybody that you know is on message boards, comment boards, Twitter, and all that. They are, they are the small percentage that speak up. Mm. It's that whole thing of you know if a film comes out and everybody's on the internet going, this is crap, this is this, this is that, and yeah. she's this and she's that. Well, they stand for the smallest percentage, but they are yeah. the loudest. There are another 95% of people that watch that yeah. that might not have liked it, but didn't have to go out of the way to jump on keyboard, or there'll it. be another yeah. percentage of people who are just like, that were good, but, yeah. you know, it's weird, isn't it? But we don't, but no, I we think don't I... feel enticed to jump on our keyboards and write good things about people. Mm. We, we, mm. I don't know why we have that in our nature. You know, don't get me wrong. We'll go to his friends. There's nothing more powerful than the word of mouth. We'll go to his friends and we'll go, watch this, it's great. Yeah. Check this out, it's brilliant. And yeah. we'll tell the ones that we love or we're close to. But we'll not often just write on some random message board. I watched a fantastic film the other day, but yet people are inclined to go, I just wasted two hours of my life watching yeah. Johnny Dixon in <laughs> Doctor No. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be talking about Jodie Whittaker and not <laughs> yeah, Johnny that's Dixon. True. That's true. Um, but I'm yeah, get a um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. So this might actually be the first kind thing of get me, me in. into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, I kind of... I've had glimpses over the years, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be kind of really well received. Yeah, I hope I'm so. gonna I'm gonna give it a go. Def- yeah. Definitely, it's the um, seen a few. I think the official trailer's out now, and it kind yeah, of pops yeah. up on my phone. Yeah, it like, is, mm, and the um, I think they've touted that it's the most money they've put into an episode as well. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Exciting. I hope you like it. A couple of weeks away, 7th of October. I'm not yeah. sure on the time yet, but uh, tune in. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Andy Boy. You're all right. I think it's uh, almost time to wrap up, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll invite you back. Yes, we, definitely. Me. Me. We're not some kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know. We'll have you back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Three, six months, something like that. Definitely. See what you've been up to. Uh, we're working on a few projects, see Absolutely. how they've gone. Um, I'm hoping some of the kids do listen to this. Yeah. Um, and maybe cause some of the kids I work with definitely struggle with the creative process, definitely struggle with just letting it flow, not caring if what comes out for the first however many hours, weeks, mm. months, years is, you know, to them no good or to everybody else kind of, yeah, they're getting there. But to just keep doing it 
you know? Yeah. Um, because they definitely leave the room when they've done a piece or been part of a project. They've processed a lot. They've, yeah. It's There's something going on beyond mm. what's calculable. Mm. I think I'll just add to that as closing comments, <laughs> final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, is if the kids are listening to this, and I hope you are, guys, um, that when you get that feeling of, you know, if you're a creative person or or you're not, but you start, well, not that you're not creative because, we've, you know, we've discussed that, you know, everybody's creative in their own way. But the idea, if you do a creative piece and you go out with that absolute buzz. Yeah. You need to know that you can achieve that all the time, but mm. every time it takes that little bit more hard work to get mm. that buzz again. But every time you put that little bit more hard yeah. work in, you get better at what you do. Yeah. And, and I think so you get calmer. You you become calmer. Yeah. But it takes, you know, it's just that you can see yourself getting better. You're developing further and yeah, further. Yeah. Every time you get that buzz, you know that you've achieved something extra that you've almost that other feather to your bow. Yeah. And you and to get that buzz, you have to try even harder the next time. And, and you have to do it, I think, personally, you have to do it continuously because what's happening is you're quiet and quieting. Is that right? Yeah. Quieting. Yeah. Yeah, or dampening the voice that inside that's saying, I can't do this or, oh, this is silly. Yeah. People are going to laugh. Yeah. But the more regular you do mm. that, even if the work is not mm. necessarily getting better. Maybe the confidence is building. Yeah, and still and the creative then, juices Yeah, flowing. yeah, yeah. I definitely. understand from what you just said then that, you know, if you stop or you're saying that you can't do this, this is just repeating what we said earlier, but we're all saying that to each other all the time yeah. in terms of, you know, I always remember being a kid and seeing, you know, somebody walk through the door and present at school or whatever it might mm. be. It's like, oh, they seem so confident. I do it now. Yeah. You know, like I'll walk into a meeting or whatever and yeah, I'll try to be like this and the other, but they don't know in my head that I'm, you know, terrified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified, yeah. but I'm, I'm not, I'm just not showing it. But then, yeah. you know, for young people, that they're not usually told that that's mm. the case. And so mm. they're led to believe, oh, it's me that's scared. They're not. Yeah, We're all scared, yeah. but we just all do it still. Because yeah, you just got to. Yeah, yeah. It's got to keep yeah. going. I mean, one thing, I mean, I don't want to go on for too long. I don't. We'll keep nearly finishing, but we can probably do another five minutes. And, well, people might have been bored 50 minutes ago. I don't know. <laughs> well, what maybe, time is it? Well, we've been going 52 minutes. I know. Wow. So, you know, just do another five. Because it's one thing I do want to talk about that we've not that I've noticed and never really considered until it happened. Well, it has, it has happened quite a number of times, but I've never really reflected on it. Um, but sometimes things are going well, really well. And you're like riding the wave. It's all going well. You get the award. You, you know, everything's brilliant. And then it's up. Yeah. And uh, there was a, an actor speaking about recently finishing a film and he, um, it's a good film that Journeyman, Jodie Whittaker, Paddy Constein, mm -hmm. and he finished it and he went into a low, just, you know, not feeling great. It's an, it's an, I can't swear, it's, a, it's an amazing film, you know? Mm. But something sometimes just takes a turn after whether that's because we've been resonating at a level and you know for, it's not for just so afterwards long. either it's sometimes it happens during yeah yeah you might yeah. you know everyone's like oh wow that's amazing you're doing yeah. great it's almost like there's no blueprint and and to not expect it you're gonna you know you're gonna feel great at this point you know not mm. so great at that point then you might have a lull then you might mm. like there's no, no road map yeah and that that's scary, yeah. isn't it? That yeah, is absolutely. scary, and that's what makes creativity, I guess, not very appealing to some people mm. because it is a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I, have you experienced I, I, that? 
Well, yeah, the absolutely. kind I mean, of we the kind talk- of plummet. Yeah, we, I mean, we were talking like about when it. you're thinking, "Whoa, what's what's going on, man?" Like, yeah, we were talking about we were talking about it a bit earlier. Like, there's been times where it's been been quiet in the career where you know, like, it's expected to feel like that. Yeah, but then there's been times where it's busy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and the unexpected the times, and you're like, you know, yeah, you, you know, what's wrong? Yeah, cliche, but you know. So scared of failure, so scared of success. Yeah. And it's that whole thing of, no matter what, you're always stepping into the new and it, that's what's scary. Yeah. It's, you know, either it's too quiet, it hasn't been this quiet for ages, this is new, panic, or, oh, this is moving too fast for me. Am I, am I ready for this? Panic. And it's yeah. that whole thing of, it's in us all. Some people hide it well. You know, other people, you know, it might only come in spouts. Other people, it might be overwhelming. Yeah. But yeah, of course, I've been there. I have. And, you know, like, well, I've been there. I am there. And I'm not there all at the same time, all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I... Um, I guess it's where you put your attention, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You, you start, yeah. I, w- I was sat editing three, four nights ago on a piece. Could not put it down. Really enjoyed it. Uh, spent way too much time on it, on the colour and all that. I was so proud of it. And then I opened up the next scene and I couldn't click with it. And all that kind of buzz that I had mm. had not just gone. It felt like it gone the other way. Yeah, You can't yeah. really do this. That were a one-off. Yeah, yeah. And literally within two days, I went from top of Eiffel Tower yeah. down in, uh, you know, Paddington Station tubes. That's like, mm. Do you know what I mean? And it were, but now I'm back up again. Yeah, yeah. That happens. Yeah, um, yeah. As long as it's not too sporadic and too... No, absolutely. When yeah. you're aware of it... Or if you, you understand, can, yeah, understand yeah, yeah. that that's a part of it. You can watch yeah. it move around a yeah. little bit, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, good stuff. But, yeah, finishing on a high, things... Yeah. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah, I'm interested to see this Doctor Who anyway, I Thank guess. Thank you very much. That's what we should be... Everybody plugs something, don't they? Yeah, when don't they? Doing, yeah. Right, there's always something, their book or the TV yeah. show or something. So, I'm actually yeah, writing guess, a book. So mm. when does when does the um, the doctor reach us? October seventh. I've actually been invited. That's a Sunday, yeah, isn't it? Is, yeah, they're and moving I, to Sundays. Yeah, and do you know why that is? I don't. I think it's because. Oh yeah, I do actually. Um, it's because when it's on Saturday nights, uh, it gets messed around with time slots when yeah, okay, X yeah. Factor and all that's on. Oh, and, the yeah. dreaded competitiveness. Yeah. So uh, with Sundays, I think it's just, look, we've got a t- constant time slot. Everybody knows to tune in at whatever time on yeah. Sunday. And you know what? I think, I mean, I, I, I've seen the official trailer. That's all I've seen. Mm. But thinking about it, what a perfect time what and you know for it to to wear i yeah. guess like sunday after is, is it sunday early early evening, evening. i think early it's about evening. six seven o'clock maybe yeah yeah just yeah chill out time everybody just yeah i think i think yeah it's a good yeah. slot of sundays yeah absolutely yeah. and i i guess not just me who thinks it there is a good vibe about it ah. so yeah it's going to be interesting um so yeah Cool. Cheers for doing well, thank this. you for having me, Andy Boy. Yeah. And I'll be listening to the next few apps with your new guests. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice one. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. See you soon.